Hello, guys. Welcome to April fifth. So, kicking into April, people start to worry about the FOMC meeting. Uh, that is going to be held on May 3rd, okay? So whether you are buying stocks, whether you are investing in commodities, gold, or even housing market, you'll wonder if they are going to raise interest rate again continuous, continuously for two times. So if that's the case, that is really a big news because in the past more than a decade, Fed has never raised the interest rate for two to two times twice consecutively. So if that's true, the market will be uh, really unpredictable. So we really want to know that if they're going to raise interest rate. First of all, let us talk about the uh, interest rate futures. Um, how what they're telling us. So in this contract, um, the market is telling us the interest rate probability is only. 13.3%. So it is really, really not high at all. So you may ask, oh, what about just like last time? Last time is the same, but like one or two weeks before the meeting, the FOMC meeting, just suddenly skyrocketed, uh, like the probability raised to 100%. Would, that, would, it, uh, would this be the case? So my point of view is today, I will tell you three things that that will not tell you or don't they uh, they don't want you to know, or even they want you to know, but they won't specifically talk about it in the media. So I will tell you three reasons why uh, in the era of Bernanke, he talked about when unemployment rate, U.S. unemployment rate hit like 7%, they will raise interest rate, right? Now the unemployment rate is 47 already. So now... Um, uh, Yellen, Janet Yellen had come on the, the play. So right now, U.S. has only raised the interest rate for three times only. So it is now 4.7. So why the procrastination, why they have to um, procrastinate or even the strength of the interest rate is so less, so little so that um, we can, almost can't feel it. Why? What's happening? So how would it, what would, what would help, in, what would happen in the next meeting in uh, May 3rd? So um, the first thing, which is the less, least important and the most short term, the third reason is the most long term, uh, a bit of the conspiracy thing going on. That is my point of view. So you can uh, take a reference off. The first one is the long farm. Okay, so not to not forget that the long farm is the coincident index that is going to measure the economy of U.S., which the whole wide world, all the investors are looking at the long farm. Um, people playing uh, investing in FX, they even have a wet wine dinner, chill out party thing every month before the long farm, which is first day April six. So don't ask me, ask your friends who who are involved in the uh, FX market. At least for the Hong Kong markets, it's, it's like that, right? So uh, oh, one good thing is in the Asia side is daytime when it is uh, uh, during the announcement. So we can, it's, uh, no, sorry, nighttime. So we can party. So for US and Canada it is not really the case unless your boss is also investing, okay? So the long farm is pretty big, okay? So the last month is 20, uh, 298,000, but this time, so you, you see that it's only 187K, which is really, really a lot less, okay? So people really, uh, the employment, the expansion is not as uh, optimal as we think. So the ADP, we often call that the uh, small non farm data. The big one, the official one is, the, is on Friday. Now, the why we should look at uh, that is going to be announced tonight. Tonight, so the small one, the ADP one. So why do we? Why don't we just look at the Friday one? For example, last month, I warned you guys that um, since the ADP long farm is pretty high, is two nine eight k. Okay, so the expectations suddenly went up. So when the official long farm is doing was doing pretty good, it's two thirty five. It's better than expected. But only within two days, the market expectation was uh, went up really high to 298. So this number was nowhere close to what we have anticipated in those two days. Because in those two days, um, the stock, uh, stock markets and the US dollar had went up already because they had gone to price in the new information that they were going to get, they were getting. 
uh, on Wednesday. So this time, 187 is, uh, is too bad. Not to mention that if they are going to raise their interest rate, like all the mortgages, all the debts on the interest rate will be um, a bit more stressful for uh, the citizens in US. So in employment, it's not as good as you would think. So any sudden in increase in, in the interest rate would be uh, would be devastating or would be uh, jeopardizing the economy. So that is really the case. The first one. The second reason is the unemployment rate, which is in which it also announced on Friday. And lucky enough that we have our videos posted on Friday. Also, this is Wednesday and Friday because. I know most likely major data will be announced on Friday. So I have my video set on Friday uh, before stock markets open in the US. In the US. So the unemployment is pretty good, right? So one thing you might not know is unemployment is, is the calculation of unemployment rate. Unemployment rate is whoever that has a job divided by whoever that is going to or want to have a job. Okay, you, if you understand what I mean, they, uh, this calculation does not take into account how many people they should be looking for a job, but they're not. Okay, so that is the participation rate. So this is uh, some uh, big blind spot, uh, blind spot of uh, checking the unemployment rate. So you see, that is exactly why Yellen is doing almost completely different approach than what Bernanke said. So from 2008, every 100 American citizens, or uh, 70, 67 would say that they were, going to, uh, they were going to find a job. So now it's dropped to right like 62, and now we found it a little bit to 63, a little bit better. But that is exactly the reason why they cannot uh, raise the interest rate because uh, they can tell the U.S. is not as good as you think, right? People just look at big data like non-farm and unemployment, but no one, not many people will check on the participation rate. So with the anticipation of 65 before, like when uh, in the era of Bernanke, of course, 7% is okay. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, measure, it's pretty uh, a positive measurement that we are ready to raise the interest rate. But now, he didn't know that the participation rate will keep on dropping. And what would market anticipate if the uh, during the downtrend, if it hits like 63, will, it, they, will they think that um, the next five or 10 years of US uh, participation rate will stay in 63? No, because it's, it went from 67 to 62. They might think that, oh, later on, only 50% of the people from US will look for a job. So out of 50%, what should they do? So they say, oh, the economy is really bad, so I will study. I will study master or a uh, PhD. Or um, I say, oh, I'll become a housewife. I'll become a gold digger, okay? So because gold digger is a, a, a better job than uh, and whatever. So now, not women, right? Men, I can be a male gold digger, whatever, man. So, so that's um, that wrap up my point. So what I'm saying that people are not optim optimistic uh, about the U.S. economy. So if we look at the further trend of participation rate, it has been it had go it has been going up really really high until the 9/11. That's exactly the time that people, even the citizens inside America, saying that no, oh, I'm not going to find a job. I will study or I don't work if I have the money. If you don't have the money, of course I have to work, right? But people tend to like I study in Canada, engineering. So um, people that are older than me used to uh, graduate and go to US. But in my generation, like I'm not too young right oh, oh uh, yeah I graduated like two years ago so <laughs> okay so now uh, more, more than a decade so in my generation people will stay in Canada even people from the US will go to Canada so they have better chance or a uh, fair more fair environment so I can't say it's bad I agree that US will have to raise interest rate only because the inflation is pretty pretty bad and the housing market is going to be uh, bad in my past in my previous video one of my videos I talk about the housing um, definitely has some kind of bubble formation coming out but not enough for a big bubble so that is exactly the time that has to do something with the housing market or not the housing will eventually uh, fire up like any uh, in any other way you'll fight up like in you'll fight up for a longer 
uh, longer period of time or fiber just like this year and it burst this right in the same year so they know that economy and the bubble will come but they want it to play for a little bit longer right so if they want to be play short that's fine just don't raise interest rate so the third reason why they can raise the interest rate is the currency so now they really have to uh, play the stories and better have the market has the anticipation that they will go into it to have a uh, really big interest rate coming on because uh, only that I've studied history or statistics of the uh, ec e uh, e economy, right? So I understand that every bull cycle they have to raise an interest rate for 20 or 36 times. So for the last, last for pre previous bull cycle, it has raised for 25, 26, I believe. So and every time the intensity doesn't have to be 0 0.25 it can be 0 0.5 0 0.75 so i understand that but do you or any other uh, people or the amateurs or average show know that is coming is coming no right because not mo not many of them have had participated in the stock market in the 2003 2008 interest rate hike cycle right so if they don't have the story planned out correctly and people anticipate, oh, you're going to raise interest rate like that, right? Like this strong. Uh, so, and they just raise the interest rate like this time right now in, in May, the US dollar will go strong, okay? So if it goes wrong, what's wrong? First of all, Trump is really a smart businessman. If you hate him or not, that's the fact, right? So I look at the Apprentice series, like the season, all the seasons, right? So he's pretty... Uh, arrogant like of course he has money so um i think that um he's a smart businessman i uh, in my point of view so he said that he had already uh warned us that he's going to raise the interest rate for eight times if there's a bubble he'll make them burst right now okay so the other thing but in the same time he will make sure the usd will go weak so you mean like what wait what like you will raise interest rate but you can make the dollar go weak Okay, that is pretty, pretty crazy, right? So I don't know the answer. I don't know what, what he's doing. But definitely, he means that he will make the dollar weaker so that they can finally do some more business in export. And because the GDP is a composite of many things, the only true area that U.S. can earn money is from export. That's it, okay? So with our weak currency, they can do, uh, do business and export. So... Uh, that's the reason that they not a, not something they don't want you to know, but it's something between uh, the U.S. and China is something behind the scene that they're fighting for. So if you see that, um, if the U.S. dollar is not getting stronger because of themselves, because of the U.S., it's because um, uh, because the U.S. if if, if it goes strong, the RMB. Uh, which is the currency of China will go weak, right? We go, we go really weak. So if it goes weak, who will do more business in export? China, okay. So this time, if it does that, they would uh, tell China that oh, you are manipulating part, uh, your currency. So for now, let me tell you something uh, fair. Every country plays around their currency. So um, um, China, not that just I'm Chinese, but um, the people in Hong Kong hate China, right? But um, I'm, I'm nowhere close to care about the uh, politics. I, I, I care, I study them. But I, my belief is um, whoever uh, leader is on stage, even if Donald Trump, I hate him. Uh, we really have to respect the time period that that's the fact. It's no use for us to whine about anything that we can't do about it. So um, anyway, um, so they would say that China, a Chinese, you're managing your currency, so make it stronger. That's a fair game. Or else I will go to WTO or something like that. I will sue you. So now this time, uh, China will come back to the US. No, you raised your interest rate. I didn't do that. You raised that so the US dollar goes so strong. So that not just renminbi, Australian dollars, Canadian dollars, Euro, all get weaker because of you. So you ask yourself, don't come and ask me. Okay, so that's the key. So that's kind of a little bit of con conspiracy stuff. But um, that's kind of the main reason why they keep on procrastinating on the interest rate hike. Um, so my point of view is that they can procrastinate, but there are risks. Uh, as I said, if they really take the chance to play around with the interest rate, not going to erase the interest rate, 
um, they can gamble and do some more, a lot, maybe a lot more business in exporting. They are taking risk of housing market and any other things uh, in inflation is going up crazy before they can do that. So they're playing fire in some way. So I will see what how it goes. But for now, because short term wise, short mid term wise, the data is not as good. So I think the uh, the FOMC meeting coming up in May third will not be the most likely. They are not going to raise interest rate. So that um, this is also an education video. So um, the, for the June, July, or September FOMC meeting, before and after, you can finally know, understand what you sh uh, what you talk about and what you should pay attention with. Looking, uh, watching TV, Bloomberg TV, or uh, YouTube, or whatever the news. So now you can be participate more and earlier um, in all your investment. So if you're new new to my channel, I'm really pleased to meet you please subscribe my youtube channel and my facebook page and uh, if you have any other topics you want me to share about or any questions please uh please like first uh, smash the like button first and then you can leave me some comments below i can reply each of them so i'm really thankful and uh to announce that we finally reached 300 subscribers so i heard that that is pretty hard um so what i did in hong kong singapore and malaysia is kind of the same i stuck with 100 people for one year so that's really pain which is what pain is uh more than a bit three months it's been uh 300 i'm not doing pranking videos i'm not doing stuff like that uh, so in the finance market i know it's pretty uh hard to gain subscribers so i really pleaseful and uh thankful that you are here so um i have been doing some vlogs in uh, used to be doing some vlogs in hong kong tell me if i do that because my wife speaks english and my children all speak english so let's see so i'm going to canada actually in J um, july and august uh, but i'm going back to toronto um, people have been asking me will i host some class or seminar in vancouver i can consider it but i just don't want that if i go there there's just two people right so i at least i have to bring even my flight tickets so if that's new york oh that new york is a better choice because i can go to boston new york and chicago because it's kind of close and i can visit new york because uh, last time i've been there was um, two months before 9-11. So even people said that uh, the 9-11 is conspiracy. That's pretty big deal, right? I know. I know you guys. But uh, anyway, so um, Australia. Yeah, Australia definitely a must. So tell me uh, where you want me to go. I will take a manual note. So hopefully I can see you there. So next time I will see you Friday. That's after ADP non Prime has uh, announced and before the official non Prime has announced. So please review the tape review the um not tape the video for a couple of times so take some notes that's really important for you to make any investment decisions so i'll see you next time goodbye